All right, here we go. We're going to do a quick review of Unit 1 and what's this all about. Remember we did this little thing called Vang? Well, that was the first section, and we were doing multiple representations. So we looked at verbally, uh, algebraically, algebraically, you got to sound that one out, numerically, and then the last one, graphically. So... Those were the multiple representations going back and forth from all of these. We also then went and did a lot of calculator skills like finding max, min, regression, you know, that best fit line, a bunch of stuff on there. So we got a lot of calculator ideas that we're going to use for the rest of the year, window, table, things like that. Plus looking at multiple representations, throwing some linear functions, call it a day. Here we go. So I picked a couple problems off the corrective assignment. Remember, that's longer than the review. So if you want that extra practice before the test, you can do the corrective assignment. Uh, if you feel like you got it, just go ahead and do that quick uh, the review for it. So uh, I thought this was the harder one, so I gave you this one. If I give you numeric, remember, it's just like giving you two points, like the point two eight and the point six twenty. What are you going to do with that? You can, if I'm going to go to algebraic, you know, you can try to plot these points, but they're not going to fit. 620 is on the graph. So if I can write the algebraic, the function that represents it, these are going to be linear here. So depending on how you want to do this, usually if I'm going to graph something, I go for mx plus b. So the first thing you need is the slope. So just right off the bat, kind of puts everything in, uh, together here, change in y over the change in x. So you have something like this. Uh, once you have your slope, that's going to be 3. You can plug it in and find B. So <clears throat> I think uh, that's maybe the more challenging one, the more uh, algebra skills in this one. Pick either point to plug back in there, and you're looking at something like this. Solve for B. Awesome. Once you have that, you can graph it. I think it'll end up being 2, but you can graph it on here, and then make up a verbal, something about time and height, what, how the height of something is changing over time. Awesome. So a little story there. Cool. Then uh, that led us to a little bit of function notation, uh, kind of plugging things in. You know, function notation is nice. What's the f of 4? You just plug it in, right? Plug in negative 4. Be careful on this first one. The reason I picked negative 4 here is a lot of people, uh, not a lot, sometimes people have issues with that negative in there. So wherever there's an x, replace it with negative 4. Just remember you square this, it becomes positive. So that's really 2 times 16 plus 12. So finish that bad boy out. Remember, this notation is what x makes a y value of 20. So you're actually taking the g of x and setting it equal to that. So you actually have to solve this one for x. So solve that equation. Absolute values are fun. Uh, and then this one is the other one some people don't like. You're plugging, you're replacing x with x plus 2. So wherever there's an x, you're going to put in x plus 2. Something like this. And then a lot of, not a lot, I keep saying not a lot. I don't know what that's all about. Some people will say that, sure, this is no problem. This is x squared plus 4. No, that's not true. Don't do that. That really means 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2. So it's, you're squaring them. Minus, you can go ahead and distribute that 3. 3x three minus 6. So again, you have to foil this out. You have to do a double distribute uh, to this thing. This is what you're really looking for here. So you're really saying 2 times everything. x squared, x times the 2 is 2x, plus another 2x, plus 4, and then you've got this minus 3x minus 6. So now distribute this to everything, and then simplify it, clean it up, and you're good to go. So some common mistakes on that one. So that's function notation. Then we did this linear function. So remember, we were doing linear functions because we were looking at a couple different ways to write. Slope intercept is at mx plus b. And again, I just kind of did one earlier, but if it's perpendicular to this line, remember, perpendicular means you want the negative reciprocal. You want to take it, flip it, and change the sign. So you're looking for negative 2, and it goes through that point uh, in slope-intercept form. Standard form was ax plus by equals c. And this had the cover-up method. If you want to cover up one of these and solve for the y-intercepts, or you can solve for y and graph, but I was hoping you do cover-up method. And point slope form is this y minus y. There's the slope, x minus x. So this one's nice when you're given this, a point and the slope, hence the name. Uh, so you've got to find the slope, you know, do you subtract your y's over subtract your x's, and then plug in either one of these points for that. Awesome, so that was really linear functions 1.2. And then we wrapped it up with some factoring. So factoring, uh, remember, if you're going to solve an equation, you've got to get everything on one side. So we've got to set it equal to 0. So in this case, let's do the middle one here. i got 2x squared 
minus 13x equals 7. Then I'm going to subtract that 7. And maybe you can do all that in one step. But we have something like this. Once it's set equal to 0, now we can go through our method. And I showed you the, the Mr. Brush Shady method, if you want to use that. However you do it, you're going to have to do the last times the first and say negative 14. And then the middle is negative 13. So you always got to do the AC method, or this times this. Uh, and in this case, it looks like it's got to be 14 and 1, and he has to be negative because negative 14 plus 1 is negative 13. So if you want to do it the shady method, you just bring the 2 down to both of them. Um, so if you like that method, if you like Mr. Bruss method, you do something like this. You say 2x minus 14, 2x plus 1. I know that can't be right because I multiplied everything here by 2, so i got to take that 2 out of there. So Right off the bat, I can take that 2 back out, and this is going to leave me with x minus 7 when I take that out. And that's going to leave me with 2x plus 1. And then I can say, okay, what makes this 0? Well, sure, if x is 7, or if x is solve this equation, when does 2x plus 1 equal 0? It should be negative 1 half. So I'm looking at these two answers right here. Fantastic. And then I expect you can do all that fun stuff on the calculator. If you need a review on that, you may have to go back and watch all the fun stuff on the calculator. But if you made it this far, I hope you're pretty good on that. Uh, special regression, we'll be doing that all year long. So that's just a quick review to get us ready for the test. I hope that helps out. Good luck on the test. Peace out.